How to build a model steam engine. Stuart Models Victoria, part one. Opening the package. This is not just an unboxing video. There's quite a lot more to it than that, so please keep watching. This is a very detailed and comprehensive guide on how to build the Stuart Models Victoria. But I would like to put a disclaimer in right at the beginning and say that I cannot accept any responsibility for any injuries caused by following these directions. And that includes opening the package with a sharp knife. I would also like to say at this stage that all parts for the Stuart Models Victoria steam engine were purchased from Stuart Models at the full retail price. I have no connection whatsoever with Stuart Models Limited other than being a satisfied customer over the years. It's like Christmas morning at the moment, opening my present. And here's the first tip. I'm opening the package carefully because I want to keep this piece of paper that's around the outer edge of the box. And I think I'm going to frame this and hang it in the workshop. It also has a picture of Mr. Stuart Turner on the front, who started building these models in 1898. But I hope to build this Stuart Models Victoria in slightly less time than that. So where's my logic in starting with a Stuart Models Victoria? Well, it's quite simple really. It was the first Stuart model that I ever built. I found it quite simple and very straightforward to build. And if anyone's worried about the physical size being a problem, if you only have a small lathe, Please be aware that I built my first Stuart Models Victoria using a hobby mat lathe, which is a very small lathe. You may have noticed at the moment that the on-screen images are blurred, and that's because the images are of the copyright drawings that come with the casting set. When the time comes to buy your own Victoria set of castings from Stuart Models, you will of course get a set of drawings that you're able to read. Each Stuart Models casting set comes with a guarantee and if you read the guarantee you will see what it's all about. Because sometimes in the casting process you can get problems, usually with chilled castings. But I've personally found that Stuart Models castings rarely suffer from this problem. You can of course buy castings like this from the internet, via the auction site that we all know and love. Personally, I would buy an item like this direct from Stuart Models, or of course from one of Stuart Models dealers. When looking at some of the sources on the internet, there are quite a few forgeries out there, so do be careful. I've always quite liked the presentation of these casting sets from Stuart Models. All the castings and parts sit on a piece of cardboard and the vacuum packed onto there. And it's a very good way of keeping all the parts together. But there comes a time when you have to take the parts out of the packaging. So here we go, starting with the base. Be very careful when handling the castings at this stage, because there are sharp pieces of metal on some of the edges. This is very standard on most castings, but that doesn't mean you want to start off the building process by cutting your fingers, so do be careful. If this was a pre-machined, pre-finished kit, it would be very easy. But unfortunately it's not, and you will have to do this. This is only the introduction, so I'm not going to show the process full length. I'm just trying to give you some idea of what you have to look forward to. It's good practice for filing. And it's also good to do it on a cold day, because you will get quite warm doing it. Whatever you do though, do not file the corners perfectly square. You need to leave a small radius using a needle file. As a demonstration, I've only filed this small area. I'll show the entire process in the second episode. A bit of useful advice very early on in the build. Always treat every part of the model as a model in itself, and work on it with good attention to detail. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. I have a bad habit. Well, I have many bad habits, but this particular one is losing gaskets. So in this clip, I'm putting all of them in a safe place, along with the graphite yarn too. Before starting any of the work, it's a great idea to consult the parts list and identify all the components. I'll try and do it from memory and common sense. This, of course, is the crankshaft. But it's not quite as obvious what some of the other parts are. Look at this lot. It's anybody's guess. Most of the steel parts are covered in oil. This is a rust proofing agent that I'm currently removing with a cloth. The parts list is very comprehensive. Always have this to hand. What some people do is they photocopy the drawings and work from the photocopy, therefore keeping the drawing clean. I don't tend to do this, I just get on with it. This lump of metal is for making the crossheads. And this is the connecting rod. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of machining to do on this part. And what about these two pieces? These are for the crosshead guides. 
it's not always obvious what all these pieces of steel are for. So initially it's a really good idea to constantly refer to the parts list so you know which part is for which job. And some parts have multiple uses. This piece of steel for instance, this is to make the eccentric rod and the sides of the valve lever. This piece of steel is for making the valve lever arms and this is going to be the main piston rod and this is going to be the crank pin. All these parts are carefully worked out to be the correct length. This looks a bit long for the crank pin, but remember there has to be sufficient metal to hold it in the chuck to machine it. One of these pieces of bar is going to be the lever arm shaft and the other one is going to be the valve rod. These two smaller pieces of bar will first of all need to be cut in half and the ends of the four pieces will be threaded to locate the cross head guides. And this looks to me to be the piece of steel that will need to be machined to hold the connecting rod to the piston rod, also known as the small end. The valve linkage on a Stuart Models Victoria is quite interesting. The normal arrangement for a non-reversing model steam engine is to have the eccentric rod directly coupled to the valve. But on the Victoria and other Stuart engines, some of them use a rocking lever arrangement, and this will be turned into the transverse rocking shaft bracket. And this last piece of steel will be machined into some rocking shaft arms. And finally, this very small piece of silver steel, I assume, is to pin the crank web to the crankshaft. As I said right at the beginning of the video, you do get a comprehensive parts list included with the kit. And I use the term kit loosely. Don't forget, this is a set of castings. Don't ever confuse it with a kit that bolts together. That is called a pre machine kit. Once you've built a steam engine from castings, you really can say, this is all my own work. I almost forgot, in the first pack there was also this casting. And this is the casting for the rear cylinder cover. What I'm doing here is scraping off some of the casting sand that's stuck to the casting itself. And whilst on the subject of casting sand, this is the cylinder. And the first thing to do is to give it a gentle clean up. I'm using my little mini craft drill with a drum sander attached. And yes, I can see that the drum is loose on the shaft, but nevertheless it's doing the job. I find it's a really good idea to always clean up the castings before you machine them, because you're likely to damage the cutting tool. This part of the video is not really about just cleaning up the cylinder like this. The steam ports in the Stuart Victoria are cast in, and that's the reason for cleaning around the steam ports, because I need to poke something through to make sure that the steam ways are not fully blocked with casting sand. And as it says on the screen, this next part is extremely important. It is extremely important to get rid of every trace of this casting sand, or you will come up against a major problem. In the last couple of years, I've repaired two Stuart Victorias. One was a twin Victoria, which was very well made indeed, but it wouldn't run at all. And when I looked into it, it wouldn't run because this was the problem. The ports were full of casting sand. At this stage of the construction, it is not difficult to remove this sand. I find the best way to get rid of it is to use a piece of 3 16 boiler banding, because it's flexible enough to find its way through the steamways. I'm using it from both ends of the steam port, and here I'm using a pair of pliers to make sure I push it into every part of the steamway. And if you look on the bench, you will see just how much casting sand is coming out of these steamways. Quite a lot. If this casting sand is not removed, the sand could of course damage the cylinder. But the main problem seems to be that once this sand gets mixed with a little steam oil, after you lubricate the engine, it forms a very effective plug which prevents the steam from getting to the cylinder. So after removing this excess of sand from the bench, I'm now going to use my airline to just blow through the ports and make sure there's none left. And just as it says on the screen, it is essential to wear personal protective equipment, known as PPE, when using a compressed airline to blow the remaining sand out of the steam pots in the casting. Wearing suitable eye protection and a breathing mask is recommended in order to prevent any personal injury. Before putting the cylinder away until it's time to be machined, I just cleaned it up a little bit on my belt sander, being very careful of course not to remove too much material. The final casting from the first pack is the drive pulley. This will machine up to be the drive pulley that sits on the end of the crankshaft. And last but not least, this small plastic pot of nuts and bolts are all that you will need to bolt your finished creation together, unless of course you drop them on the floor. Well, in my workshop anyway. Moving right along now to the next pack. This is a more interesting pack of castings. And the first one is obvious. It's the steam chest and the steam chest cover. 
and these are the main bearing castings. These are quite tricky to machine, so I'll take it nice and slowly when I machine these so everyone understands. No prizes for guessing what this is. This is the eccentric strap. And this is called the pedestal that supports the outer edge of the crankshaft. And on the finished engine, the alignment of this component is critical. I always spend quite a lot of time getting this component right. There aren't many parts left to look at now. This is an important part. This will metamorphose. That's a good word, metamorphose. This part will be machined to make the stuffing glands for the engine. One for the piston rod and one for the valve rod. And absolutely no prizes are available whatsoever for knowing what this is. It's the crank web. This is a small piece of bronze bushing material, but just enough to make bushes for the big end and the small end. And this is a Viton piston ring. The last Victoria that I built used the cast iron piston ring, but that was a long, long time ago. But now it appears that a Viton piston ring is the order of the day. There are two pieces of metal here that are a very similar size and shape. The only difference is, one is slightly bigger than the other, I can see that, but the one at the bottom, or the nearest to the camera, is a piece of cast iron, and the one nearest my hand is a piece of steel. The piece of cast iron will be machined to form the piston. Obviously it's bigger than the piston needs to be, so you can hold it in the chuck. And the steel piece, which is just slightly larger than the cast iron piece, will be machined to make the eccentric sheave. This larger piece of cast iron will be machined into the front cylinder cover. This is a slide valve casting, and very nice it is too. This, in conjunction with the piece of brass also supplied, that is the driver for the slide valve, and it's a perfect fit. Notice it's not a tight fit, it is not meant to be a tight fit. And I've saved the best till last, the flywheel. For me these are the most enjoyable part to machine on a steam engine. And the job will of course start with a file, to clean up the flashings on the spokes and on the inner rim of the flywheel. I'm going to try and get one of these episodes out per month. I can't do any more than that because of pressure of work, I mean my normal job work. Unfortunately my idea of living on a desert island and being a coconut farmer did not come to fruition. I'm very grateful for the people who've made donations and the people who've joined Patreon, and I'd like to say a big thank you for that. It's just the other 20,000 a day who don't contribute, but never mind, you can't have everything. I'd like to leave you at the end of this video with some footage of the Victoria I built many years ago running. I remember it well, and I do remember it first running because I stuck my finger in it and it cut my finger very badly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.